Hi everybody, this is episode 3 in a little series of videos which is going to give you a perfectly logical explanation of how nature works. In the first two videos we saw that we have to change our mind about what is driving events in the universe. Since Einstein threw out gravity as a force if a gravitational field is not a force, a magnetic field is not a force. How could empty space apply a force to another magnet? And what we decided, that it must be like biology, where events are driven by information. Information in mathematical form. So if we say that gravity is an information system, we then put relativity in the same box as biology. If I moved something in the solar system, like Jupiter, everything else would receive that information and change its behaviour accordingly. It's mathematical. A planet has positive curvature. Space has negative curvature. And that curvature changes when you move something, the information is transmitted to every other planet and it's positive and negative mathematical properties. Quantum mechanics is just mathematical prop properties. It's the transmission of information which causes change. So that's our new definition of a force. The transmission of information which causes change. And now we can start to put science back together. But we also saw there was something missing from physics which could explain biology. Biology is by definition adaptable. Classical physics is by definition not adaptable. So you need to add to the physics before you can get to biology. And the addition that we need is simply the mathematical rules of chaos. They haven't been put together before because there's no forces in this book. There's just mathematical instruction. Now that's no problem. If you see physics as mathematical instruction and this as another layer of instruction on top of the physics, harmonic pendulum, a chaotic pendulum, still being operated by gravity so the physics is still there two bodies in space, three bodies in space. How simple is that? And in this book on the unpredictable systems in nature, we find chemistry and biology. So logically, it must be the link. So if the universe is driven by mathematical rules, we would expect to see mathematics and the universe building themselves as a mirror. So we need to go to the base of mathematics, right at the bottom, to see what's there and see if we see the same thing in physical systems, chemical systems and biological systems. It's long been suspected that something like this would happen. So I'm going to give you a little quote from Brian Cox. There's a mystery at the heart of science for which, as yet, with no explanation. And that is, this universe is simple. Underneath all the astonishing complexity, there appears to be a magnificent simplicity. And nowhere is that more obvious than in the construction of the elements. So let's look at the construction of the elements and see if it's the same as the construction of mathematics. Now some of you may know there are certain numbers in mathematics, the prime numbers, which build all the other numbers. So let's see if the little patterns are the same. Now the two prime numbers that build all the other composite numbers are 2 and 3. Now mathematics comes in three really distinct parts. Numerology, numbers which are built from primes, building blocks. But I've also got geometry. 
So is there a relationship seeing the same pattern of principles between geometry and numerology? The numbers 2 and 3. If I go to the base of geometry, I've got Pythagoras' theorem. Is that based on the relationship between the numbers 2 and 3? I just want to read to you now out of a particle physics book to show you something that's really astonishing. This is by Frank Close, and he's talking about beta decay among the three different generations of matter. Uh, notice this three. Remarkably, all of these turn out to be linked together in a way we can illustrate using nothing more sophisticated than the geometry of right angles, triangles, and Pythagoras' theorem, and reveal that there is indeed a profound universality at work. So let's just go to physics, physical material, right to the base. The simplest system of physical material is a proton, which is made of two up quarks and one down quark, a relationship between two and three. And the up quarks have to spin in opposite directions because they're not allowed to be the same by Pauli's exclusion principle. And the charges are just the same. A neutron is just the same. And what about the atom? I've got the proton, the neutron, and the electron. So that's just the same. And what about the construction of the element and the construction of numbers? The first two composite numbers are 4 and 6. The first composite element is helium, which has 4 nuclear particles and 6 particles all together. And if you look at any diagram which shows helium forming in the sun, it's based everything, every step of the way, between, on the numbers 2 and 3. Deuterium has to be formed first, tritium next. It's a mirror. And once you know to look for this, you'll see that people in every university department have already seen this pattern. But because they all work separately, they haven't realised they've all seen the same thing. I'm just going to read a bit from a book about Murray Gell-Mann, who was a particle physicist. So the triplet, in fact, could be thought of as a kind of building block for larger patterns. The SU3 triplets, they decided, for the time being, must be little more than a curious mathematical accounting device. Well, we're saying it's a bit more than curious because it shows up in books on genetics. Think about genetics, DNA. At base, you've got pairs, A, T, C and G, that change into each other, just like a neutron and a proton can change into each other. And those pairs form triplet code. So when I bought this book, I knew I would find the triplets in there and there they're called codons but then if you go to the base of any system in nature how many colors do you need to make all the rest your sense of smell olfaction three different receptors or in your eye or the fact you've got three canals in your ear or if I start to look at chemistry and biology look at respiration and photosynthesis they're a mirror image of each other, all based upon pairs and triplets, and you can't have one without the other. If you just tried to have a vegetation by itself, it would just keep producing more and more oxygen until a bolt of lightning, the atmosphere would explode. So you've got to see animals and plants as a system working together. They're both composite. So what's their third partner, which is decomposite? I'll leave you to work that one out. So we found pairs and triplets in every every field of science. Music. I've got a wonderful PhD written about music all being based upon pairs and triplets. What I want you to do is to help us to find more pairs and triplets because you find so many a computer code, binary, a machine code. It's we just We've got a whole folder now full of examples of it. It's exactly what you would expect to see in a mathematically driven 
universe. Exactly. So it does all make sense in the end. It's a common sense universe. That's what we always wanted. Think of things like the fundamental interactions. I've got gravity, the strong interaction, and the electro-weak interaction. So once again, it's a pair and a triplet. And I think of fields, magnetic field, electrical field, gravitational field. So what we've done, we've used this as a blueprint to redraw the standard model. And what you find is the whole thing turns out to be symmetrical. Now, there's already pairs and triplets in the standard model. You can see that, the quarks and the leptons, but the rest of it doesn't make any sense. What we've done is to draw it all out so it does make sense, it's all the same pattern, and to make it complete, to make the pattern complete, you've got to put gravity in there. If you want a copy of that, just send me an email and I'll send it to you. How simple is that? We just find a pattern, we go into every department, look for common information, put it all side by side, it all starts to add up like a giant crossword puzzle and it helps you sort out the problem of the standard model. If the periodic table is all ordered, what's underneath it should be all ordered, and what's above it should be all ordered, and it is. You just need your pair and your triplet, your base sets of rules, quantum mechanics at base, because that can exist by itself, clouds of hydrogen, classical mechanics, gravity makes the star, quantum me mechanics produces the element and holds the star up. But I also need number three, the partner, laws of chaos for all the turbulence in the sun. So you see how it works. Each one a bit more complex. Quantum mechanics works together with classical mechanics, works together with chaotic mechanics to form stars and elements. When that star explodes, information is produced in the new elements which are then conserved. They hang about and they make a system which is much more complex, a solar system, which because it's made of different elements, gas and silicon, water and iron and metals, you get a self-organisation of the solar system, which again is reflared, re reflected in the fact that you've got large body, rings, lots of small bodies. Every gas giant is the same and the whole solar system is the same and it's got rings we just call them the asteroid belt. So please, if you've noticed the pairs and triplets out there, you'll find them in every field of science. Everyone. We've arranged the standard model as particles. The whole lot comes as pairs and triplets, but in the, you can't see that in the standard model. So we need some help from you to put together this new complexity gradient that's what it is. Matter drives up a complexity gradient. It doesn't fall together by chance. If you're just trying to do it with physics, all you've got is chance. Biology, random mutation. We all know a kidney or an eye don't fall together randomly. You get exactly what you want. And it's always seeking efficiency and greater complexity. That's what sexual behaviour is. It increases the diversity and complexity of matter from asexual creatures like a hydrid producing clones, single outcomes, to an infinite number of possible outcomes. So if you want uh, a definition of life, biological life, it's simply to increase the diversity of matter. That's it. See you next time.